These data represent a set of TOF spectra that have been split into nominal mass units. So each VAMAS block represents a distinct nominal mass. If we overlay these data, you can see that the original spectrum can be visualized. So each one of these peaks represents a different VAMAS block. One of the reasons for saving the data as individual VAMAS blocks is that while TOF spectra are collected, the majority of the bins within the time spectrum are close to zero, whereas the data of interest is centered around these nominal masses. So if we were interested in doing any manipulation of the data, this nominal mass at 27 represents a very useful target for any processing operations we want to perform. Given a spectrum that's been split into VAMAS blocks, it means that we can target specific VAMAS blocks for peak fitting. In this case, we'll have a look at the 27 nominal mass, which has two peaks. And these are quite interesting in the sense that they are well separated, so you can clearly see the peak shapes. And they represent two different forms of peaks that you see in TOF spectra. We have an elemental peak here that has a characteristic asymmetric shape. And then we have a, a CH fragment type peak, which has less of an asymmetry. And so both of these peaks are reasonably representative of the type of peaks that you see in other situations. This is the silicon peak. This is an example where you might want to differentiate intensity from two peaks that overlap. So this is an example of where a peak fit might be useful. However, in terms of understanding how to create a peak fit, the Aluminium and this CH fragment peak will be very useful. The basics for creating a peak model for TOFSIMS data is the same as for other techniques such as XPS. That the first thing you need to do is create a background. In this case, we've got a background type of zero. Next, we go to the components property page and create a pair of peaks. We'll just give these different names. So we have two peaks that have come in and the line shapes are LF line shapes, which can be used for asymmetry and other techniques. But in this case, what we're going to do is look at a new line shape, which is the QA line shape. The QA line shape is very similar in its definition to the LA line shape. The difference is the QA line shape is aimed at peaks other than XPS peaks, and in particular, techniques where you have a flat top peak, for example, quadrupole mass spec, you have more of a flat top peak. So hence the QA is useful for other techniques than TOF sims. But nevertheless, it, it has a, a place within TOF sims because not only does it have a, a different shape here, it also has a tighter spread in the wings. So you can see that the spread differs significantly from the LA line shape. And that would be the Lorentzian line shape. That would be the underlying shape that would be associated with an XPS peak. But in terms of mass spec, the basic shape is somewhat different. And this is once again, like the LA, is convoluted with a Gaussian. So if we introduce a Gaussian of a specific width, we tend to find that the peak shape turns more Gaussian, but you still have the, the wings that are characterized by the QA or the quartic form for this particular line shape. So that we can specify a value less than one on the right hand side compared to a value of one on the left hand side so you end up with asymmetry. And if we suppress this wing here, which would be another feature that you'd see in TOF sims, you make that 1.6, for example, you end up with a, a suppressed wing on the left hand side and a, an extended wing on the right hand side. And when we say fit, we end up with a reasonable fit to these data. Now that's characteristic of an elemental peak. 
when you have a fragment peak, a CH fragment type peak here, then it tends to be more symmetrical. And while we could carry on using this particular line shape here, you can actually do a reasonable job with the QA by simply using a symmetrical peak by using a single parameter. This is one for both the left and right hand side. You could have specified that as one comma one. These are identical. And this provides a fit here. And if we zoom out and put a residual on, you can see we're getting a reasonable fit. We could probably improve this some by a bit more manipulation of the line shapes or potentially you have more than one peak here. Say so fit and perhaps this is the, the fit that would be required. But nevertheless you end up with a peak model and if I propagate this peak model We can examine how this peak model applies to these other data.